Alright, whatever. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code ITRESOLVES10YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What's going on guys? Welcome back to another gameplay video. Today we are taking another look at life gain, this time splashing a little bit of green for a Selesnia splash uh, with things that uh, Adventures in the Forgotten Realms brought us. So we've gotten a lot of really interesting stuff out of the new set. Uh, one of the cards that really struck my eye and that I have been seeing a lot on the ladder is uh, Trolisara. I hope I'm saying that correctly, the Moon Dancer, uh, which is a 2-2 two, two for two. Whenever you gain life, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it and then scry one. And if this sounds familiar to you, it should be because essentially it's an Ajani's Pride Mate with a little extra buff. Uh, that scry is actually really, really crucial because that obviously is gonna inform the rest of our decisions, gonna help us dig through our deck, do that kind of thing. Uh, one downside, obviously it is a legendary creature, which means we can't have more than one of them on the field at any given time. However, we have got plenty Plenty of other options that we can play throughout these games. So a lot of the similar stuff that you would normally see, Soul Warden, I'll see out of Life's Bounty, gives a little bit of protection when needed. Obviously the Pride Mate, we've got two Daxos, we're not running the full four. Uh, and then we do have, of course, Heliod, Righteous Valkyrie, and I'm actually playing a full four Resplenda Angel. And the reason being is this is a Collected Company deck. Since we're splashing green, why not play one of, I think, the best green cards in Historic, which is Collected Company. Four mana, instant speed, look the top six cards of your deck, put two creature cards with mana value three or less from among them onto the battlefield. Uh, essentially that hits everything in our deck other than cleric class which allows us to gain a little bit of extra life. It does work very very well. Uh, sort of similar to Heliod that if you level it up to level two whenever you gain life you put a 1-1 counter on every cre or on target creature you control uh, and then you can actually bring stuff back as well from the uh, from the graveyard. So very very sick card. I'm actually really stoked to try this one out uh, and that's Pretty much it. It's a pretty straightforward list, very aggro. Uh, the only other like new addition is Cave of the Frost Dragon, which I'm just trying out as a one of. Generally, I don't like these lands in like uh, minimal, we'll say, order, but uh, I did. I just wanted to try this. I didn't want to go too far with it. Uh, we also do run a Castle Ardenvale, which is truthfully a little bit better for the deck, in my opinion. Uh, and so I wanted to maximize the number of planes that we could have. So that's part of why I didn't add more of these caves in. But regardless, Regardless, I have tested this deck out. So far, it's doing pretty well. So let's go ahead. We're going to run it through three games and let's see how it does. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is pretty easy keep. Uh, could certainly be a lot worse. I'm really actually very happy with this. So let's do this. We're going to start with the Cleric class. Let's give this one a shot. Normally I would lean on the Alciad, but I want to give this one a try and see how this goes. I'd also like to get Daxos down here. Um, this just ensures that we are going to be gaining a little bit of life, and then obviously the cleric class gets to add one to that, which is kind of nice. So we'll see how it goes. Looks like we are against a ramp-ish deck. Uh, let's do this. Um, I think the play is going to just be mana efficiency. So let's go ahead. Let's throw this out there. I will attack him with Daxos since they can't really block it. Um, I mean, they could, but it doesn't seem like a great idea. Uh, and we'll see how this one goes. Uh, I'd love to be able to gain a lot of life at one turn, specifically five life, and then be able to uh, to get an angel as well. So we'll see how this goes. Uh, interesting. Okay, uh, so definitely playing out the Ajani's Pride Mate first. Uh, and then we'll play out the Alcy out of Life's Bounty. And then I think we'll just throw this out there uh, as a tapped option. Uh, and I think we'll just attack with the Resplendent Angel. There's not really a reason to attack with Daxos since they can just block with Druid of the Cow. Um, very rampy deck this. Uh, very curious to see how this actually pans out. Worth noting, we can next turn just clear it class. Just level that up. That's a great mana sink long term, which is pretty awesome in my opinion because it just gives us some extra ability we will say uh oh that's very good um all right so what do we want to do i think it's probably just to play the righteous valkyrie it looks like this is just mono green 
so our goal is very clear. We are just here to uh, demolish as best we can. So let's get some attacks in. Uh, truthfully, we could have actually attacked with Alciad, and then that would have actually uh, gotten the Righteous Valkyrie where it needed to be. But I'd rather not just lose it. I'd rather be able to protect something, and so that's kind of why we did not attack with it. Uh, and truthfully, next turn, I mean, we, we're we getting close to the Resplenda Angel trigger. Any creature is going to gain us life, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, interesting. Finale of Devastation, a very good card, but all they got was a Beast Whisper, which is good, but they didn't cast it, so it doesn't actually draw them a card either. Oh, yes, please. All right, here we go. I mean, that's just absolutely perfect. Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, yeah, I will happily attack with everything. Uh, that seems pretty good, and that's going to win us the game. Easy. <laughs> Man, life gain is so good. All right. Uh, well, great first game. Let's go ahead and jump into game two. All right, guys, here we are for game number two, and this is a pretty solid keep as well. We do have to shock ourselves with this uh, Temple Garden if we want to play on curve, but I think that's actually okay. Uh, we get the Alciad down early. Oh, well, that solves our problem. Never mind. We don't have to do that. Uh, that's perfect. Next turn, um, we can actually just play the Moon Dancer. That's scary. Uh, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Uh, all right. Let's throw this out. Let's play the Moon Dancer here. Uh, we do attack in, uh, which is going to allow us to gain a life here, which does trigger the Moon Dancer. Um, I'll actually leave that on top. They're going to mill most likely this turn. I mean, chances are uh, all they need is a land. Yep. Uh, so I don't particularly care to have another Alciad right now, so I'm all too happy to let that hit. Uh, and they are going to Blood Chief's Thirst here. That's fine. Um... Not great for us, but not the end of the world. We do have Resplenda Angel to follow this up, so I think we'll be okay. Uh, and I am just going to play it like this. Uh, play that Resplenda Angel out. This is a very solid threat against this list, uh, solely because they generally don't have a whole lot to deal with. Uh, they can Brazen Borrow it, but that's not a permanent way to deal with it. Uh, I am going to attack in. Again, this just gives us a little extra life, which we do want to get to 27 uh for the righteous valkyrie so there is a good reason to attack there um hopefully don't have another land they did Ugh, terrible 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 uh all right so they've got a brazen borrower and two unknowns very nervous uh, with uh these mill decks i hate playing against these mill decks to be honest um Generally, I think the life gain deck does an okay job of outpacing, uh, but I don't think here we're going to see that. I think we're a little bit behind on this one. <clears throat> that Brazen Borrower tempo hit was pretty solid on their end, to be honest. Uh, that's just a really good way to do it. Um, and they could have had a counter there. I guess they didn't. Uh, we'll attack in. Again, just, just gaining as much life as we can. We do really want to hit uh, as that 27 on the off chance we pull a righteous valkyrie that makes a big difference so uh, they do probably want to get this brazen borrower down at some point if nothing else is a blocker for the resplenda angel um oh wow oh no uh yeah that's really good fabled passage and a deck with ruin crab is killer uh it is what it is though i we're doing the best we can, I think. Uh, there's not a whole lot that we could do uh, other than this, so I think we're doing the right thing. Um, interesting. Okay, so let's do this. Let's do this. We play this, it gains us two life. Uh, alternatively, we could power this up uh, and then attack in with both of these, putting a counter here. Um... Or actually on the Alciad, which might be a good idea. Let's do that. Uh, let's go ahead. We'll attack in here. Uh, what we're going to try and do is power up the Alciad as quickly as we can. This, is gonna, this has lifelinks. So the, the crucial part of this is that this then um, gains us a good bit of life, which can then trigger the tokens, uh, which will hopefully be enough. But we're, we're pretty behind here. Um, the, the end of the story is a tricky one to deal with. Okay. Fair enough. All right, so there's a planes. Let's do this. It's going to gain us two life. 
This would gain us three unless this gets countered, which it looks like it will. Uh, yep. Fair enough. Uh, we attack for two here. We don't need to attack with the Soul Warden. It doesn't have lifelink. It's not going to matter. Uh, but this does get us up to 27, technically. Doesn't seem great in this this state, though. We, we have very few cards left. <laughs> uh, so I don't think there's going to be much we can do, but we'll play it out. I mean, you never know. They could just be uh, bricking completely, but we'll see. Uh, the only downside to this also is if they do bounce it, that's kind of a problem for us. Um, but it's all good. We can... <laughs> All right, so we're going to give this protection from black as to counter any further spells. Okay, they didn't have anything. So here's what we do. We do this. And we get a card back, uh, which is pretty solid, actually. Uh, the question is which one, and I think it's Righteous Valkyrie. I think that's just the best option. Uh, this is a nice non-interacting way like they don't have a lot they could do against this if they can bounce this then I mean that's fine but like I think uh, this definitely is a step in the right direction at the very least so we'll see let's spread the counters out a little bit um, we'll see how this goes all right so we attack him for four I mean worth noting the opponent didn't do much of anything last turn they played a blood chief's thirst which is good uh but it didn't ah uh, there we go uh we'll throw it here so i'm assuming they can bounce righteous valkyrie or get rid of it somehow uh and they should be able to attack in here maybe maybe not we'll see i mean they did draw four cards just now so uh i would think they could yeah there it is yeah, I mean, unfortunately, <clears throat> I think that means we're pretty pretty dead in the water here. They're going to be able to pull something out of our uh, graveyard if they'd like. Uh, they may not even want to, though. I mean, I guess they do, but like, just for repeating this effect, but they don't actually have to. Uh, okay, they're going to get Heliod, which is good, but actually not that great, uh, to be honest. Throw this out. Uh, we'll throw it here. I'm going to go ahead and throw this out to maximize damage output. Uh, so if they are enticed to block, they might do it now. <clears throat> this could theoretically stop the mill, but they're going to take the six. That's a big hit. We just have to hope they don't have a lot of brazen borrowers, essentially. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Down to three cards, oh no. Uh, yeah. If they just mill three, I mean, we're we're just dead in the water. Um, I am gonna spit out another three. Uh, and I think I put that on the human token here. Uh, so that trades with Zerasan, uh, which is kind of the important part. <clears throat> um, so they can only let one thing through they're going to put the brazen borrowers down but this gains us life which means we actually this kind of doesn't hurt us all that bad oh wow they've got a lot okay uh, so that could kill everything there so we want to put it here um Maybe here. I'm not 100% sure on that. They can triple block the Righteous Valkyrie if they'd like. Um, but now, I mean, this is lethal on its own, so they literally have to block that. Um, I mean, I don't know. We're putting up a fight is all I'm saying. We've only got like two cards left in our deck, but we're trying. Uh, okay. Cool. Uh, interesting maneuvering there uh that was a really interesting maneuver actually but we'll i mean we'll see how it goes all they need is a land i mean <laughs> it looks like they may not have had it but they could have actually scribed with castle vantress and guaranteed most likely guaranteed their uh their win but that's fine i didn't want to do it um 
So what's the trick? If they do attack with Zerasan, what do we do? Okay. Uh, do we decide to block or do we just let it happen? I think now we're definitely going to decide to block because we actually just get to throw counters here. <laughs> <clears throat> And we don't want them, very crucially, to, to be able to take anything. Maybe should have put that counter elsewhere, but that second one. But that's okay. Uh, they could deal four here. They could attack here if they wanted, but that doesn't seem great. Put it here. Maybe. Just don't have a land. Don't have a land, please. No. Oh, no. Oh, so close. So close. <clears throat> Good game. They got us. God, I hate that. All right, just pass the turn. Just just do it. Just end it. All right, there we go. All right, let's jump into game three, guys. All right, everybody, we are one and one uh, going into this third and final game. This isn't a great hand. We have no green, but we do have these two. I'm going to give it a shot here. Um, we'll see how it goes. We haven't gotten to see Collected Company at all, uh, which is a little unfortunate, but looks like, oh, no, <laughs> we're going to only draw white sources. Um, but it looks like we're in a mirror match, uh, potentially mono white, but we'll see. Uh, they're going to think we're mono white for sure. Okay. Um, yeah, certainly good. Another card we could consider putting in this deck that we have not is Luris. Um, <clears throat> Luris is obviously very good for multiple reasons, but it is an option for us if we would want to uh, go that route. I'm going to attack in here and see what they do. They're just going to let it happen. All right. I just thought I'd try. We can give this, we could have given this pro white, so it wouldn't have really mattered, but uh, all right. Black white, it looks like. Interesting. Uh, this is hilarious because we're just both going to be gaining <laughs> a butt on a life. <clears throat> uh, I mean, this is very good, though. It does actually hurt us a bit here. Um, all right. OK, uh, that's actually good. We're going to throw this out. Resolve. That's fine. Yep. Scry that to the bottom. My goodness, we have so many lands. Uh, okay, um, we'll pass. That'll be it. Pretty easy. We'll see how this goes. All right. Let's do this. That's a good card. I really like the uh, elixir, actually. It's very solid. Cool. They're going to draw a card. Very solid. And now it's our turn. Throw this out. Throw out the Soul Warden here. Resolve. Resolve. Wow, so many lands. My goodness. Uh, okay, we are going to start attacking in here. We do need to get them lower on their life total. Looks like they're just going to take it. That is fine. Um, and we'll pass. Uh, crucially, the Alciad gives us a little bit more blocking potential than they normally would have. So we have some options here. We'll see how this goes. Uh, does that just win them the game? Is that how this works? Uh, no. I don't think I want that. That I do, sure. All right, so I think they might just win here, though, if I recall this little combo correctly. Yep. This is, oh no, they do not. OK, my mistake. I thought they just like immediately won, but they do not. Uh, yep, my turn. All right, uh, Resplenda Angel for sure. It's going down. Uh, resolve. Yes, I know we lose that much life. It's fine. <clears throat> Ooh, yes. Uh, I definitely want Collected Company. OK, I mean, there's hope. Uh, let's do this. Part of me really wants to give this pro white, uh, but they probably just don't block anyway. So I think we just let it go. All right. I mean, we're even ish. Uh, we offset some of the life loss, which is kind of cool. Um, and Collected Company could be really, really solid for us here. So we'll see. I have hope. I have a lot of hope. Um, I mean, this is just going to continuously get a lot bigger. So 
Uh, and we're going to keep scrying this Coco to the top. I mean, that card is just so good uh, that it's very difficult to not keep that on top. Uh, resolve all, that's fine. Whenever you gain life, target player loses that much life. Whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. Okay, so that's why this isn't the combo. Uh... I'm going to give this pro black. It just keeps that from even working. <clears throat> um, I don't know what exactly they were planning there, but I don't think that that was going to work either way. All right. Uh, we're cocoing now. Oh, oh. wow. OK, uh, Heliod, Righteous Valkyrie. That's pretty good. Uh, this is going to be an interesting stack. I wonder how this actually pans out. Do we die? Is that how this works? Um, I'm gonna throw it here. Ooh. Yeah, sure, we'll try. I mean, it's a bit slow, but that's fine. Yep. I mean, they are gonna have to like deal with a very strong board presence here at the very least, so. Let's do this. Giving you lifelink. And that's going to get us out of range at the very least, so that's pretty good. I mean, this is going to gain us 14 life. I think that's good. Uh, this is also going to spit out an angel, which is going to trigger everything again. Um, uh, but crucially, Righteous Valkyrie also triggers, so we actually gain a good bit of life here. And they're blocking with the Night Priest. Okay. That gets rid of one of their things, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm actually going to throw some counters here. Kind of just want to spread the love a little bit. Uh, <laughs> this is hilarious. The, the stack process in this one is just great. All right. Uh, I mean, I guess we should put it on the angel, to be fair. Um, yeah, that's pretty solid. And now we are one life away from, or one creature away, really, from getting to 27, which will buff up our entire team thanks to Righteous Valkyrie. Okay, this is how we die. Right? Yep. That sucks. We were a turn away... <laughs> I'm mad. I'm really mad. All right, whatever. <laughs> Let's talk about this deck. I'm so upset. All right, uh, that was a little frustrating. I'm not going to lie. That last game, we basically had it. Uh, but I mean, the opponent had a combo and they did the right thing. They kept their uh, their veto around and it worked. So I can't be too upset, but that is a little frustrating in my opinion. Uh, regardless, we played a good game. We played a good three games in my opinion. Um, I don't necessarily think we misplayed too heavily or anything like that. Obviously, we didn't come out on top overall, but... I think that was somewhat circumstantial and somewhat uh, just the nature of trying out something a little bit new. I mean, we're we're dealing with a little bit of a different style life gain deck with a Coco build and that kind of thing. Um, and I really enjoy that. I actually really love Coco in these kind of life gain builds because you get a really solid trigger uh, off of it. But overall, didn't pan out super on top. I think this could use a little bit of configuration still, but I really like it. I mean, it feels like it's a good solid life gain deck, and we did see it gain just a butt ton of life. <laughs> uh, so I love it. I'm very, very happy with it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please make sure you subscribe if you're not already. We do have a giveaway going on right now for a free Adventures in the Forgotten Realms bundle uh, that will be going until August 5th. We also have some really awesome Patreon rewards this month that if you would like to pick up, we would love for you to do so. Head over to our Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash it resolves if you're interested. But guys, thank you so much. I'll see you again very, very soon for some more gameplay.